point blank where we suss up what's on the hearts and minds of Singaporeans like you and me. I'm Yvonne. And I'm Nick. <laughs> and today we get on the topic, we get really worked up and we ask your questions on point blank. Yes, we ask your questions point blank. Today we're talking about graciousness. Well, is Singapore gracious or graceless? Are we well on our way to becoming a gracious society or not? Well, we hear complaints all the time. People's abhorrent behaviour in food courts, in queues, in void decks, yep. cinemas, you know, whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah that's yeah. right. And then there is the other kind that says, stop criticising Singaporeans, come on. Our black sheep are not any blacker than any other countries. Which is quite true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Oh yeah, by the way, uh, <laughs> I forgot yeah. to introduce you. Yeah, you forgot to introduce me. Oh, this is oh, Kim okay. Sparkerman. Hey guys. And, yeah, she's from Straits Times and she's a reporter. We'll mm -hmm. tell you a bit more about why she's here later on. But first up, we'll actually do something else first. To help us along the way, we know that Singapore has campaigns, right? Lots yeah, and lots of campaigns. Right. Very Singaporean thing. We have what? Yeah, well, you know, we have don't litter, don't spit, don't do this, spend time with your family, be courteous, eat dinner. Yes, you get yeah. the idea. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so Kim, Nick and I, we're going to look at Prime Minister Lee Sen Lung, who took some time out of one of his most important annual speeches to talk about being gracious. Let's take a look at it again today. The well-being of Singaporeans depends not just on bread and butter issues, but also on our human and social environment, which means on how we behave, how we relate to one another as Singaporeans. How can we make Singapore a more gracious society? We've done many things over the years to improve ourselves. We've got all sorts of campaigns and initiatives. Queue up, be courteous, no spitting, please flush toilets. Most recently, service excellence. Go the extra mile for Singapore. Sometimes people laugh at us. But actually, these are things which we can work on and improve. And if we make people aware of their behaviour and conscious of the impact on others, we can educate them and gradually they can learn new habits and they will respond and our social norms will upgrade. And we have made progress. For us, living in Singapore, seeing one another day by day, we don't notice. For people who come here once in a while and see us at long intervals, it's like a, one of these speeded up movies. They can see the difference. There was a letter in the Straits Times forum page recently which was very interesting and I was very moved reading it. It was a, from a Sri Lankan lady who had visited Singapore 40 years ago when she came here on her way to America to be a postgraduate student. And she came back again recently, now much older, and she needed a wheelchair at the airport. And she spent a few days in Singapore, and she was sufficiently moved to write this letter, which the Straits Times published. And let me read a little bit of it. From the moment I landed until I left, the city impressed me. Everywhere, I met only kindness. I was in a shopping centre and asked a young girl the way to the MRT station. She offered to show me the way and taking my shopping bags led me to the station. Shopkeepers gave me water to drink. People waiting for a bus walked with me to the correct bus stop and people helped me cross the street. I have never experienced this sort of kindness anywhere else in the world. I think she must have been a very nice lady, but the people who behaved so well to her flew the flag for Singapore. We don't know who they are, but we should thank them. We can do even better, of course. We have a Singapore kindness movement, and it conducts surveys of social behaviours that Singaporeans consider important and not important. And they showed me a list of the different things. Quite interesting. Not important, considered not important, doesn't mean really not important. But considered important at least shows me where some of the problems are. So some of the things we are good at is sitting properly at the cinema. Don't put your feet on the chair in front of you. Very difficult for tall people like me. 
say thank you after being served. Now that people remember. But other things not so good. Say please are not so common. Clear tables and return food trays need to improve. We are trying to inculcate this habit. I don't understand. Every national serviceman knows exactly what to do in his cookhouse. <laughs> we even need more reservist training. <laughs> but at Suntec City, no reservists, no NS men. So it's going to take time to change the mindset. Because the mindset is, I go to the food courts to eat and not to clean tables. So I got a letter recently from somebody, a lady, an email, talking exactly about this, about how we should make Singapore a more happy place to live. And she mentioned this. She said, actually, we should feel quite embarrassed to leave our dirty plates and dirty table for the next diner. In my mum's house, after eating, we will clean our clear our plates and clean the table. This is a good habit we should adopt outside the home. Then she went on to add, oh yes, most importantly, no fines. No fines. <laughs> Dishing out fines hurt relationships and no good image for PAP government. <laughs> <laughs> so I thank her for her good wishes. We shall try and find some way before thinking about fines. That's right, flying the flag for <laughs> Singapore. Yeah, well, exactly my point, you know, because there are the good sheep and then there are the black sheep. And there are the good sheep who, you know, who, who walk people across the roads, who help people, and then there and are those... Like the exceptional sheep. Oh, you think so? I think so. It's very rare. Mm -hmm. yeah. how, about, how about you, Kimberly? Well, I don't really think that we should, you know, say that it's rare. I mean, definitely you have people... I mean, we've been, we've been taught to be, you know, uh, I mean, in school, did you, did you all not take Hao Gong Ming lessons? <laughs> well, yeah, 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 anyone remember? Yeah, 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 yeah. We yeah. were very obedient people, you know. I remember meeting quite a number of people uh, out of my stints, and they actually tell me, um, well, if you put up signs telling people to behave, to do things right, to do things nicely, they will actually do it. We're oh, very obedient people. But, yeah. So we follow only mm. signages and uh, campaigns? Uh? Well, yeah. you know, we follow orders. Oh, we yeah, follow orders as yes. well, yeah. Okay, the reason why uh, Kim is here today, okay, I was keeping you guys in a bit of suspense just now, <laughs> is because in the name of work, she's actually gone incognito as a food court cleaner. Yeah. As a HDB cleaner. HDB cleaner. To find out more about the people who clean up after Singapore. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So... Okay, let's look at some of the stuff that you've done. Uh, besides food court cleaner and HDB cleaner, what else do you do? Uh, well, we sussed out the cinemas because uh -huh. uh, you know cinemas are you know Singaporeans like favorite pastime. They every, mm. everything also watch movie, you know. That's yes, quite yes, yes, First yes. date watch movie. <laughs> go out with friends watch movie. So we figured that's the best place to actually suss out Singaporean behavior. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. we went uh, you know undercover with uh, Mr. James Tan, who that's is right. uh, yeah. This one, right? Right. Yeah, we right. have that. We have that for you. Uh, this one. Yeah. There you go, there is Mr. James Tan. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And we followed uh, him around when he was cleaning cinemas because mm -hmm. they only got like 10 minutes in between. Uh, yeah. You know, the time the show ends and the next one starts, he's got 10 minutes to clean up this whole wreckage of uh, stuff that's yeah. in the cinema. Yeah, yeah, okay. So what were your, what were the shocking things that you found? In the cinema? Yeah, what, what were your most shocking finds? It looks quite well, nasty, you know, the pictures. Ugh. Well, yeah. I guess, yeah, well, the pictures, yeah, they, 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 really, they really say a lot more than I can say. But um, <laughs> the thing that we saw in the cinemas, uh, the standard really crappy stuff, you know, people eat. And yeah. then you have popcorn all over the floor, um, really yeah. all over. Like, if you look at the picture, you can... Yeah, the picture over yeah, there. Yeah, 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 you can see that, uh, you know, it's just strewn all over. You have cups that have actually spilled. And then you see, uh, you know, the, the coke trickling down the rows. Mm -hmm. And then it, it, it's very difficult for them to clean up because, you know, you have such a short period of time. Right. And then, right. you know, you have so much to clean up. You have those KFC boxes that are stuffed under the chairs. Yeah. yeah um, well, some of the cleaners actually told us. Well, we didn't see it. We were hoping to <laughs> actually see it. But some of them have told us they've, they've picked up things like... Um, what am I allowed to say? It's yes, use condoms. Use, use, yeah, con yeah, well, I have to be politically <laughs> correct, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, it's okay. People th yeah. use condoms in Yeah, people use yeah, condoms. Yeah, well, they, they do it in the <laughs> cinema. You don't, you don't know it, but they use condoms. Oh, yeah. I don't know it. Yeah, well, I've heard they use it in the cinema. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Did you, you know, know that? You find them there. Yeah. If you find them there, they're obviously using it right in the back seat, right? Right in the back. Mm. Right the seats. It was very dark, very dank, 
very suspicious looking, very seedy. Goodness. But he found them there. Yeah. We were climbing over the seats trying to see mm. if we could spot any. Okay, yeah. reality bites. Huh? So mm. people people do funny stuff in the cinema. Yeah. Spill popcorn, use condoms. Yeah. I, I know people who throw popcorn in the cinema. Throw popcorn? Yeah, actually, he did say that that was the hardest part that he had to deal with because when they, kids, when they throw popcorn, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. they happen to always pick the sticky ones. The, the caramel, <laughs> the caramel kind. Oh, yeah, the, the, yeah, it's Why sticky. Why can't you throw, throw the sorted ones? The sticky the ones, the people's head better. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you stick. speak from experience. Uh, no, no <laughs> I, I am a model citizen. Oh, of course, of course. Model. <laughs> okay, sure you are. Okay. Yeah, Definitely. Right. So that's cinemas. Um, okay, uh, what are the kind of... Uh, which is there like a demographic of people who throw more popcorn than others or <laughs> dirty more cinemas than others? Well, I'd like to say, well, I would like to say mm. that, uh, you know, everyone's capable of that kind of behaviour from sure. time to time. Yeah, but true. Uh, Mr Tan was telling us that actually students, kids, are the ones who are most guilty of it because they don't seem to have so much of a social conscience, he feels. Mm -hmm. Like for them, it's just all play for fun. You know, that moment of fun is for them, but they don't think about what happens after that. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was saying he felt like telling them, you sweep lah, you sweep the floor. <laughs> uh, then you know how it feels like. Because oh. after they leave, it's just all over the place. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. Because people don't necessarily stay back to face the consequences. Uh, no, no, I mean, no, the no. minute the movie's out, everybody's gone. Yeah, it's like a yeah. buffalo. Like, yeah. yeah, and then leaving like, like locusts. Yeah. Like, right. Leave like, right. like, I don't it's know, destruction behind them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so that's one of the stories that you did. It's, right. it's mm -hmm. a series, isn't it? Gracious or Graceless? Yes. Yes, that's What's right. the series about? Um, well, actually, the, the ads of uh, The Straits Times, uh, because of uh, what we just saw, you know, PM uh, Lee's speech, we decided mm -hmm. to actually uh, go on a, a project to see whether or not, um, you know, Singaporeans can, I mean, in the necessary circumstances, be gracious. Mm -hmm. You know, so we, you know, my ads, they sat down, they, they, they talked about it, brainstormed, thought about the situations that you could put Singaporeans in, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then we came out with four of the most common types, you know, one w was a uh, food court cleaner, mm -hmm. uh, well, cinema like we talked about, yes. info counters, <laughs> info yeah, counters. where people uh, go there and info. demand information on the spot. Like immediately, yeah, I, want, I want it now. I want it now. Yeah, I want it now. Okay, okay. And mm -hmm. uh, the last one we did, uh, which is <laughs> going to be featured tomorrow, toilet cleaners. Are we famous for our toilet cleaners? Oh. You went and became a toilet cleaner. I know, I went and followed toilet okay. cleaners around. You should have become one though. Might have been very enriching. Um, I worry <laughs> for my sanity. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay, okay. Yeah. So let's look uh, at your articles, the stuff that you have done. Sure. How about the info counters, the our yeah. info junkies, huh? people who want the information now, 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 or, yeah. you know, yeah. or well, I'll no, give you high hell and all that. No, there's actually, okay, there are those. There are mm -hmm. those. I mean, when we were there, we actually came across one woman who was trying to exchange her receipts for free car park coupons. A redeeming then, stuff, is it? Yeah. Sorry? Yeah, redeeming? It's, yeah okay. it's a redeeming thing. And then um, the, the thing was that when she, she realised that she didn't have the right receipt, she just had a, a slip. It wasn't the proper receipt. She told the guy, but it, it's here, you know. And he was like, I'm sorry, I can't do that because that's not policy, you know. Yeah. And she was like, what do you mean it's not policy? She was like, you should just change it for me now. This is the receipt. Look, this is what I have. And then the guy said, I'm sorry, I can't help you because really I can't. It's out of policy. She just, whatever, you know, she just slammed on the table and walked away. You know, I mean, oh. these, these are the kind of things that... And, and, and yeah, and the info counter guy was like, listen, I, I can't really do anything because it's, it's policy. Mm -hmm. But then mm -hmm. there are the good ones too, you know, those that are very mm -hmm. understanding, very patient, very, you know, very nice. Yeah. yeah, there is a phenomenon that some sociologists have coined as uh, the McDonaldization of society, mm -hmm. yeah, where they say people want things, f want things the fast food instant way, yeah. instant, yeah. instant. I want it and I want it now. Yeah. You know, any yeah. slower, any just you know just just a second slower, it's not good enough. Right. So right. we maybe maybe you know. A lot of the info counters, you see stuff like that. It's not uncommon. True, true. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe we're yeah. just like what you said. We're just too used to getting things quickly, faster. The kind of pace that we live in, we just <laughs> want everything to be done quickly. We don't want to waste time. Yeah, yeah that's, that's true. right. Yeah. That's right. So what did you observe in your, your little trek down those info counters? Um, actually, uh, what was a very interesting thing that one of the info counter people told me, I think his name was uh, uh, Mr. Sham Shamsuddin, I think. A very young kid, tw mm -hmm. 20 years old. Worked part time at info counters at Vivo for like the past two years, mm -hmm. or since Vivo opened. And mm -hmm. he said that, um, you know, people may want things fast, but you also have to look at it from the other, you know, the other side. And it's graciousness has to be a two way thing. Like he yeah. was saying, it was very interesting what he said. He said, I can do my best to help you, but you also have to be, you know, be nice about it, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, you're nice about it. 
I, on my part, try to do as much as I can to help you. And if you can see that I'm sincere, I'm trying my best, then everyone's happy. Yeah, it's definitely way. a two-way thing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. like, if you don't, you know, if you're demanding a horrible and I'm the customer service operator, I would not want to help you. Yeah. 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 You just turn people off it if you're just, just like, treating oh, them badly. No. Exactly. Mm -hmm. We just need to have basic courtesy. Yeah, yeah it's, it's about, about yeah, exactly, putting yourself in other people's mm -hmm. shoes. You don't want to be like that also, you know. You don't want to end up having someone shouting at you yeah, too, exactly. right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the thing, that some some people sort of, you know, uh, pin it down on Singaporeans saying that they're impatient, mm -hmm. they want things mm -hmm. quickly, you know, you hear those horror stories about Singaporeans going overseas and complaining about the slow pace of <laughs> yeah. service oh goodness, overseas. So you know, I mean, these are common stories. Right. I'm sure we've heard mm. it yeah, at some point definitely. or other. I guess it's just because, you know, yeah. we're a lot... I mean, they're just a lot more laid back there. It's just that we just... You know, we, we, haven't, we can't adapt to that kind of pace. Yeah. Judging yeah, from yeah. where we come from. Because, like, we rush everywhere, you know, who run yeah. for this, run for yeah, that. And yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. The other thing is how people treat service staff. Oh. Uh, that's a very big grouse I've heard uh, mm -hmm. from many people yeah. on yes. the streets. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Well, I think uh, one of the key things that I caught my eye was your article on food courts. What table manners, right? Yes, that's right. Yep. Yeah, and you were like a food court auntie for a day. Oh, that was... <laughs> you look that quite is, good, you right? You don't I, I do. Listen, listen. No one, <laughs> no one <laughs> recognized me. Yeah, that's Kim. Yeah, I had yeah. my own set of kopi kiam threads, okay? <laughs> do you still have them? No, I gave oh. them back straight away because it was quite traumatic. <laughs> it's your, it's yeah, your next Halloween costume. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't even recognize you actually. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, seriously. I think it's when you can, when you get down on the ground, and you, and you know, people don't realize, uh, you know, who you, what you're actually doing, mm -hmm. and then you just go along with the whole flow. That's when you really, really see what people are like, uh, how yeah. they behave to you. You know. Yeah. So, so tell us, you know, what was your, tell, tell, me, tell us your one bad experience that you had. I think for me, it was more of the fact that people just, just don't say please and thank you. They don't treat you on the same level, you know. Uh -huh. There was, um, I think I told my, my colleagues, uh, I kept complaining to them about it because uh, <laughs> I when, I came, back, I yeah, when I came back, I came back job. <laughs> yeah, because one lady, I was standing there and I was, uh, you know, uh, loading the trays, you know, mm -hmm. the dirty trays onto the, the stand yeah. and she, she had a table just like somewhere maybe here. She came up to me and she went, eh, 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 clean. Like yeah. that, yeah, hey, 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 hey. I was like, hey, excuse wow. me, who you think you're talking to, man? <laughs> yeah, I mean, of course I couldn't do, I couldn't blow the cover, so I just yeah. meekly went. But for me, it was a problem because I felt, why can't you say, excuse me, can you help me, or please, can you help? Be decent me? about yeah, it. Yeah, be decent nice, about yeah. it. I was like, do I look like your maid? <laughs> I mean, yeah, at least she yeah. go, auntie, auntie, auntie. I, oh, oh, there was someone who did that, but oh, they really? were very polite. They were, auntie, can you please help me? That, that's fine. <laughs> okay, I can take the auntie then. <laughs> you know? Yeah, this one was just, eh, hey, hey, eh, can you, you know? Yeah. Mm. But do you meet any okay? Do you meet do you meet any like nice people? Oh though? yeah, of course. I mean, for every bad person, there are probably I'm sure like ten other good ones, mm -hmm. you know. And there were those who were very very sweet. I remember uh, there was this uh, bunch of schoolgirls, mm -hmm. and then when I cleaned the table for them, the and together with another older cleaner, she turned to the older cleaner and she said, "Thank you, auntie." And then I asked her, and then I, I mean, at that point I blew my cover. And I just asked <laughs> her why you say thank you to the auntie, and she said, "Well, because she's much older than I am." And I have to respect her. She's doing me a favor by cleaning the table. Yeah. She's old and she's doing this. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, that was quite touching. Definitely. Yeah. So you kind of you get people who are really not you know grateful at all for mm. the help that cleaners but render. But there's always the other end of the spectrum where people actually appreciate what. Right. You know you I mean, do. it takes all sorts, you know, mm -hmm. to make the world kind of mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. Yeah. So from your as generally from your experience uh, uh, for all these stories that you've done to suss out whether Singapore uh, Singaporeans are gracious or graceless, what's your gut feel about? you know, about, about it. And in general, in a sweeping view. I think, I don't think we are graceless. Mm -hmm. I think it would be very hard to say. I mean, putting it as gracious or graceless is too much of an extreme. I think Too much of a black and white. Yeah, too yeah. much of a black and white. And, and I don't really think that it's so easily categorised. Mm -hmm. I think we have the potential to be gracious. It's just whether or not it's in the... It's the time and place, the situation mm -hmm. calls for it. I think sometimes maybe we just need to put a mm -hmm. little bit more thought into our actions, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. I mean, it's it's not so much a, a situation of just like, oh, uh, you know, that like, it's my right or something like that. I think we should learn not to think of things as our mm -hmm. right, yeah, you definitely. know? And that, you know, we have to think of people on the same level. And appreciate other people. And appreciate other people, that's right. Yeah. That's right. So, yeah. well, meanwhile, it's time for a break, but when we come back, our Razor TV team hits eating places to spy on those acts of ungraciousness. See you later.